All right, everyone. So we're going to go over the trades from today. Um, I don't have a trade that's a really great case study today. I've been doing these case studies when we have a trade that's just like a sort of a perfect example of something that I teach or the strategy that I trade. But the three stocks I trade today, uh, all of them produce small base hits. Got myself a little more than halfway to the daily goal. But then things kind of just ran out of steam and I threw in the towel. So I didn't want to overstay my welcome. I'm on the traveling trading station and, you know, I just figured, eh, I'm just going to enjoy this low key kind of Friday. I'm green and live to trade another day. But what I'll do today is I will go over each of the trades and walk you through what I was thinking, why I, why I bought the position, why I liked it. And, um, you know, then please feel free to put questions and comments down below. Uh, by the way, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe because I've been uploading a lot of content on day trading strategy that I think you guys uh, are really going to enjoy. So, and there's a lot more to come. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Okay. So, uh, this morning sat down, uh, around 645, looked at the scanners and saw MRNO was up like 150%. So I was like, holy smokes, this thing is a huge gapper. I pull up the chart and I realized that it's, um, it, it appears to be a recent IPO, although I kind of understood pretty quickly by checking the news that it was a special acquisition company that did a merge. So yesterday it hit a high of 40, it sold off to 10 and then pre-market at like 4 a.m. It kind of get like jams up, it jam, gets jammed up from 10 all the way to 40. But then it comes back down quite a bit, all the way down here to, you know, $20 at 645. So my first trade of the day was on um, MRNO and I bought it, um, I bought it right here. This is kind of an interesting setup because it was holding this level around $24. And I was just like, you know, this thing might do like a little red to green. You know, it's been selling off here, but if it can get back over VWAP, we've got some room. So what I ended up doing on this one, uh, it comes up to 20, let's see, it comes up to 25, 26, um, 27. And I ended up buying a, a thousand shares, which is kind of a big position. It pops up to $29.49. It goes up to 29.99. Then it pulls back here down to 27.74. It comes back up again to 29, almost to 30. And it couldn't break. And so I sold. Uh, I, I was up about thirteen hundred dollars on it, um, but locked up uh, one thousand. So you know, look, a thousand dollars of profit really can't complain about that. Uh, and at the time when I took this, the trade, the tre the spreads were tightening up. They were getting tighter and tighter and tighter right under the breakout. And then when it busted through that level, you know, all of a sudden I was up a dollar, almost two dollars a share. So, so a solid trade there, but. Unfortunately, it couldn't get over VWAP. If it could, then I would have been getting dialed in for a retest of this high up here, 43. And that's when things could have gotten really exciting. But unfortunately, that didn't happen today. It was our leading gapper, but just not clean. Now at the open, now there are actually two other trades. So there was one other um, trade that I didn't take, but I was watching it right here at this sort of double bottom level. And I almost punched it, and then I was like, nah, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't buy it below VWAP. It's a little too weak. It, it comes up 27, it dips back down, and then it breaks down even further. Now, at the open, we got a little red to green. It pulls back, squeezes into a halt up at 24. It opens and hits a high of 28, and then flushes and halts down. Opens and goes lower. So I think the writing is on the wall that this is not going to be something easy to trade. Okay, so that was my first trade, broke the ice, $1,000. Now, something that I talk about a lot is that as a trader, and I was actually just talking about this last night, th this is like one of my, um, it's a blessing and a curse that I learned to trade during a time when I was broke because it trained me to take that profit when I have it, to not gamble, to not do anything risky, to not just let it ride, but to take that profit and pay myself. And I still have that mentality even today because it's so deeply ingrained in the way I think about the market and the way I think about trading. But 
the the downside of that is that there are times where I'll stop myself out and then you know this a stock just goes higher and higher and higher. And I feel like I leave a lot of money on the table by not being a little bit more speculative and letting stuff ride. In any case, um, my goal each day still is to first try to build a cushion of about $1,000. And if I could do that in you know one or two trades, then usually on trade two or trade three, I'm increasing my risk and I'm trying to scale myself, get myself up um, you know, to 2,000, 3,000 on a day. If I could do that, the next thing you know, I'm at 5,000, which is my daily goal, and I'm looking at 8,000, 10,000 and higher. My best days start strong, but they always start by first building a cushion. So today, I was able to build a cushion on MRNO with $1,000 of profit. So then the next trade was OTLK. OTLK pops up, and it was pretty early. Now, what I noticed about this one was that um, it has a somewhat recent reverse split on the daily chart. So, and by the way, for those of you who are maybe a little bit new, the way I'm finding all these stocks is on the scanner, which is part of the day trade dashboard at Warrior Trading. This is custom software only available for members at Warrior Trading. So this is the software that I've used and I have a development team that built it for me. So I saw OTLK moving up the scans here, hitting the high day MoMA scanner. I look at the chart and I saw the S on the daily chart, which indicates that there's a split. Now I know that this was a reverse split, not a traditional split, and it's a 20 to one reverse split. I looked at the um, number of shares outstanding as of February uh, 12 or something like that. It was their recent quarterly filing. And I saw that they had 260 million shares outstanding. But then when you divide that by 20, you get down to a 13 million share shares outstanding. And the flow is about 7 million shares right now. So, so I'm like, okay, the float's fine. Um, you know, I, I can work with that. But here's the thing that's very interesting. Um, my little spidey senses went off on this one because on the first trade, I got in right here as it broke over 860, as it broke this level. Right here on this candle, I jumped in. I was like, okay, let's see what this can do. It goes up to 880. It goes up to nine dollars and ten cents i was like all right here we go and in this candle it dumps all the way down to 823 and i was like good golly that is not great now it did pop back up but that gave me like a yucky feeling i was like i don't like this at all it popped back to nine it drops down it pops back to 908 it drops down again and when i started noticing on the level two um were a lot of hidden sellers. And the way I visualize the hidden sellers is when, you know, the offer is 56. And let's just say, for instance, there's green on the tape, but it's just not breaking that price. So the, the thing with that happening is if there's a seller at 56 and you see 100,000 shares of orders going through on the level two in green at 56, and it's not breaking 56, then clearly there's an iceberg order, someone unloading a huge chunk of shares. And on this one today, there were a lot of hidden sellers. And so I don't really know, you know what the story is. I don't know who those people were, but that didn't make me feel good. So I didn't get back in right here. So anyway, so on my first trade right here, I lost 300 bucks on this drop. I lost 300 bucks on this trade. I got back in, as it started to come back up right here, but I got in a little high and I only traded with small size. I made back the 300 I'd lost and got myself back to flat. But again, these sellers were back. It sort of goes sideways and it kind of pops up and I got one more trade on it with small size, got myself up 300. I was like, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't like this stock. I don't like the way it's trading. It pulled back here down to uh, 973 and then look at this candle in one candle it jumps a dollar a share you know it's just weird but then resistance and sells off so honestly all day long this thing was really difficult to trade really choppy really weird at the open i said i'm not touching it i don't trust this stock it pops up and it halts down just really nasty price action so anyways um so that was weird just didn't feel right um, and I didn't make much money on it. I I'm green, but not by a lot.
Okay, so those are my first two trades. And then we had MLGO. Now, MLGO, this is a sort of surprise trade. I'm watching my scanners, and I see MLGO on the top gainer scanner moving up the scan. So see how OTLK has a um, green arrow right here? This tells me it's moving up the scan. SMLP has a red arrow, it's moving down the scan. So when I see a stock moving up the scan on light volume, I'm like, oh, it's kind of creeping higher. Like, let me check that out. So I pulled up MLGO, and I was like, um, does anyone see any news on this today? I was like, I'm not really sure what's going on on this. And so I asked um, the chat room, I said, hey, does anyone see any news on this? What, what's the deal? And someone said, oh, I think it's a reverse split. And so I was like, okay, interesting. Um, I don't see that on the chart, but all right. So I'm looking at it. I see the floats 1 million shares. I saw we've got a lot of room up to the 200 moving average. The 200 is up around $20. So I'm like, okay, we could bounce. It's a technical setup. And I had the level two up. And I saw it pop right here from 450 up to five. All right, so now it goes from 450 up to five right here. And initially the spread was kind of big. Excuse, sorry, I'm my, uh, <coughs> still dealing with this congestion. <coughs> so the spreads were kind of big on it. It's 450 by five. And so 50 cent spread, I was like, eh, I don't know, it's a big spread. And then the spread starts to get a little tighter. It's 475. 485, 490. So now I'm like, okay, we've got a tight spread. I'll try it. I'll buy 1,500 shares. So I took a starter at five. I added it at 520. I added it at 540. I added it at 580. And it squeezed up here to six. Does it pull back? It pops up here to a high of 626. I didn't sell anything over six. I thought maybe this was going to go up to 650 and seven and start to really open up. But it kind of stalled out. So I ended up selling right here at about five. 60 maybe 580 took the profit off and i was like eh, whatever you know it was it was worth a try but it didn't end up giving me the big move i was hoping for and then as the morning went on it's pulled back pretty dramatically so you know locked up 1800 dollars, and again that's an example of a trade that if i'd been a bit more speculative and just been like i'm holding the whole position i'm gonna see if i can you know catch a dollar two dollars a share i would have been red on that trade but because of that mentality to lock up the base hit, lock up the base hit, I ended up being green. So, you know, that's a good example of where that does help me. Now, I suppose if I had changed my mentality to being more focused on trying to hit, you know, really big winners, I would maybe be a bit more selective about the type of stocks I'm willing to trade. But nonetheless, you know, look for trades that have like more clear news catalysts. But nonetheless, that was volatility. I'm a hunter of volatility, but I always have to be a manager of risk. And I manage my risk by keeping my share size relatively small. I did max out my share size today. Um, if I go into my warnings, you'll see that I have a warning set at 5,000 shares. And I actually got an alert trigger on MLGO because I tried to add, even though I already had like 4,500 shares or something like that. And it wouldn't let me add any more. So, you know, my hotkey was for another thousand and it said, nope, denied. And, you know, even though that's a little annoying at the time, uh, I set this restriction on my account to try to keep myself sort of dialed in during this period that I'm in right now of trader rehab. So I've now been in trader rehab since Tuesday of, of last week. So I've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Today's the eighth day of Trader Rehab. Now, sadly, uh, right when I went into Trader Rehab, when I had those two big losses, it was sort of the end of the hot market. So this is classic. I mean, this happens to me all the time. So I'm trading aggressively, and then I push it a little too hard, take a couple big losses, and that's like, the, the losses are because the market's cooling off and I haven't been careful. So, took a couple of big losses, now the market's cooled off and I haven't been able to make back the profit, the, you know, make back the loss in profit. I haven't had a $10,000 green day or a $20,000 green day. I've been kind of, you know, chugging along on smaller days like this. No doubt they're adding up and I've made back, uh, you know, a good amount of the loss, but I'm not fully recovered back to flat to prior to the drawdown. It's, 
you know, probably going to take a couple more solid, couple more solid days. And so the thing here that's a real bummer is that I had a great first week of March, and then you know the second week I take two really big. I have two really big red days. I went basically back to flat on the month, and now I'm kind of struggling to get myself back to up thirty grand on the month, which. You know, last month I was up over a hundred thousand. So this is a little bit disappointing that I kind of lost eight days of progress in a sense to those two red days. I mean, I probably lost even more than that because I haven't made it all back yet. It's a reminder of the opportunity cost that when you get complacent, you get sloppy, you can dig yourself a hole and it can take it can take weeks to recover from. So, anyways, I'm a little disappointed that that happened last week, but um, but I'm also pleased that I've been able to keep my head down, stay focused, and have some nice base hit days. And this week I'm on my traveling trading station in St. Kitts and Nevis, which has been really nice. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a good time to be away because the market's been a little slow. I did miss the Reddit IPO yesterday, which, by the way, uh, pretty much did exactly what I thought it might do. Uh, and, you know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I, I should have you know maybe i should have maybe just stuck around but but i didn't travel all the way down here to sit and trade all day long um i have my window of trading and ipos are always opening outside the window so what i said on reddit was that i would watch the open and then which in this case is kind of wild we started of this high candle and then i would let it dip and then as soon as i saw green on the tape i pressed the buy button so naturally my buy button or press would have been pretty low down here in the 46 area 4650 you know 46 well the low is 4650 so probably would have been around 47 uh, but you ended up getting a nice move here up to 53 and then up to 54 so you know that was six points and then it went up to 57 which is 10 points so you know certainly there was the liquidity to take big size but i also knew that um, those IPOs, you can lose a dollar a share in an instant. So I wasn't going to take anything more than 2,000 shares for my starter. And I may have even scaled that down had I been uh, sitting here watching it. So anyways, it doesn't really matter. I might have made a little on that, but who knows? Could have also lost on it, you know, got chopped out and then gotten back in and lost. So uh, it's water under the bridge. doesn't matter. But uh, for hope. Hopefully, for those of you guys that watched my analysis on Reddit, that was able to help you trade a little bit better yesterday. So I hope it, at least that that was helpful. So anyways, and NVFY is our leading gapper this morning. It's got 48 million shares of volume, but it's a little bit of a grinder. It's a little lower priced. So I left it alone. I kind of got tempted to take a dip around $384. It did end up going up to $440, but whatever, just left it alone. So at this point, um, I'm happy with where I sit on the day. It's a green day, nothing super exciting, but locking up some profit and we'll live to trade another day. So thanks as always for tuning in. I'll be back at it on Monday morning. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. I've got some uploads that are coming this weekend. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. I hope you hit the thumbs up and I'll remind you as always that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow. And I'll see you back here on Monday.